Hiya, quick uh, update video, filming it up and down again. I know some of you get annoyed about this, but when we're doing this kind of talking about stuff that refer to a bit of the science, a bit of the physics, a bit of the, the mystery that's been uh, missed in golf for so many years and uh, through like trial and error and a bit of stumbling about, we've kind of hit on it and discovered Varden's Triangle, which has been about for years and years. Harry Varden, one of the true greatest golfers ever to play the game. So it's not a new thing, but it's something that confuses the hell out of golfers because you're in a position that is the complete opposite to the belief in golf about this Right, um, and how you should be like lining up like this and of course when you're bent over you need to slightly be in this position and this hand needs to be rotated this way so in actual fact this is your true path which then stops your right shoulder from popping out and keeps you behind the shot and when you body uses the centrifugal force, this all squares you to target. Now, what also happens is your golf club, even though it looks rigid, under load and under centrifugal force, it throws itself out and it bows under dynamic load you get a bowing effect. Now, if we use this piece of string and we start to spin it, just like the golf swing, kind of like on a plane, either, either that way or that way, you'll see that it becomes rigid. And obviously, when it's not under load, it's just like a pendulum, which fundamentally is exactly the same as your golf club. And once you realise that the motion of your golf swing from up, take my eye out there, from up to down, um, becomes something that gravity and pressure all affects. All things that are science-based, but things that you should not fight against because the three rules and the three points of the triangle mean that these all work for you. So you have a tool in your hands that is a massive lever. But if you try and employ this technique with a golf club, the ball's just going <laughs> nowhere near where you want it to go. And you could compensate by, well, the ball's going that way, so I'll just aim that way. But then the ball will just go further that way. And we've all experienced that on the golf course. So if you rewatch the videos back, expanding the Varden Triangle, and this, which a lot of you still argue the point, the rear shoulder has to be behind the lead shoulder. And a lot of you say that is closed. But when you're employing this move here, which squares everything in the Varden Triangle, this shoulder is still at the 45 degree angle and this lead shoulder clears. And this one is, voila, exactly what you see every single professional do on um, television, all the greats. But they hide it so well because they can, in the first foot, make a perfect move away from the ball. And most swings fail because the first foot is just the complete opposite move of what you believe the golf club should do. So with the Varden Triangle and the preload, what we're doing is closing, for want of a better word, you're uh, setting the vertical here, like what you saw me demoing, and then when the hands come and they can't get to the ball, there's no way I can get to the ball from you unless I use my baby move which everyone has. 
if you think about another way of doing this, is swinging just waist high to waist high, right, which would be waist high to waist high, baby little waist high to waist high, everybody can do that pretty well. It's when we get up to here that it all goes pear shaped. So what we're doing is preloading into this position so that this part here is absolutely locked in. And that is as far as you will ever get unless your little waist high move brings you to the ball. You'll also notice that my hands are perfectly leading from impact. So you've got loads of compression and loads of everything. After that, the game of golf's over. You've already hit the ball. What are you worried about? Your finish can look, it's your own finish. It's your own golf swing. It's like a fingerprint. You should be able to spot someone that you know from the horizon just by watching their golf swing because everyone's golf swing is slightly different. Don't I keep it too long and this is like a chat about why everybody talks about like a secret and uh, a trick, a myth, uh, there's something. Well, there is something because, like I say, if you think golf's like that, and if you think golf's like railway lines, that's half the battle already gone because your golf swing's trapped in a box and you can't get it out. So when you see what I, how I preload, how I set and how I swing, if you try it yourself with just the wee baby moves first, and then realise that when you're preloaded in this position, the Varden triangle where the club comes down, there, right, I, I, I cannot get to the ball until that happens. But it happens like, it's so fast, and you see it, every player does it, but it's so fast, even slowed down, right, super slow-mo, probably the worst thing ever invented for golf and analysing a golf swing because the magic is lost in, in super slow-mo. In real time, it's very difficult to spot, near impossible. But that move there, which is just a vertical drop, but it can only go one place and it can only ever go that one place. So then from there, this little thing here, you've basically, basically got Three components, three points, three is the magic number. There's a lot more following on this, so thanks for subscribing. And uh, we'll be going to the range and showing you more on this. Thanks for watching and supporting.